trouble. I've got to do something before it crashes into the city. Swinging with his enchanted mallet and holding fast to the unbreakable thong, the mighty thunder god takes to the air. The pilot has blacked out. His oxygen supply was 40. Age 15. No matter how ingenious mortals are, there is always a chance of human error. But so it is with all of life. Even we gods of Asgard are not truly perfect. There, I freed him in time. Now to set up an irresistible wind current to blow the plane safely out to sea. Thor, you saved the pilot and prevented the plane from crashing into the city. Quickly, he needs medical attention. We'll take over now, Thor. You've done your share. Boy, what a story. Thor saves pilot in midair. I owe my life to you, Thor. How, how can I ever... Say no more. It is the people who owe much to such as you for guarding our shores. And then the mighty Thor, the powerful, dauntless god of thunder, who fears nothing that lives, nothing that breathes, races from the scene nervously before the onslaught of hero-worshipping reporters and well-wishers. Thor, so, wait! We want some more pictures of you in action! Hold it! How about an interview? Come back! No! Don't close in on me! I can't be surrounded! I must have space! Room to move! We're too late! He's taken to the air again! Seconds later, atop the midtown building which houses the medical offices of Dr. Don Blake, physician. I always fear too much publicity. Too many people getting close to me. For there is always the chance that one may accidentally stumble upon the secret of my human identity. And the most awe-inspiring figure in all the world stamps his legendary mallet once upon the rooftop beneath his feet. And... Where the mighty Thor had knelt but a second before... The slim, vain figure of Dr. Don Blake now rises in his place. So far, so good. Now to go downstairs, walk around the block, and enter my office normally, so as to arouse no suspicion. As the vain doctor slowly circles the block, he is lost so deeply in thought that he is oblivious to the cries of the corner newsboy. Extra, extra! All about the strange monster of the volcano! The headline reads, Inhuman Creature Stalks Scene of New Volcanic Eruption. For Dr. Blake has another matter on his mind, one which deals with his lovely nurse, Jane Foster. Hello, Jane. Although it's my day off, I thought I'd come and speak to you. I can't put it off any longer. I've got to tell her how I feel about her. Even a thunder god has feelings, emotions. Even Thor can fall victim to love. I was just finishing an inventory of your medical supplies, Doctor. Age 17. Now, what was it you wanted to say to me? And yet, I don't dare tell her my true feelings. If by some wonderful miracle she should agree to marry me, I would have to reveal that Thor and I are one and the same. And that secret is not mine to divulge. Not without the permission of Odin, my father. Lord of the gods of Asgard. Come to think of it, Jane... Perhaps this is not the right time. I think I know what it is that you're trying to say, Doctor. You've wanted to say it to me for months. I can feel it, but why don't you? Oh, Jane, my darling, if only I could. But give me just one more day. There is one thing I must do first, and then... Yes, Doctor, I know. There is always just one more thing. Well, a girl can't wait forever, Don Blake. Not for a man who hasn't enough gumption to speak his own mind. Good night, Doctor. And at that soul-searing moment, the tortured human with a gnarled walking stick makes his decision. Grimly, he stamps his cane upon the floor. As a powerful thunderclap fills the room. I can postpone it no longer. It must be done. But I must do it as Thor... Son of Odin. A microsecond later, the mighty thunder god faces a half-open window, and then... Noble Odin, 
show thyself to thy son. I summon thee, O my immortal father. Speak then, my Lord. I grant thee leave to petition me. My heart is torn with love, my father. I crave permission to marry a mortal girl, the nurse of Dr. Blake, the one known as Jane Foster. Have you taken leave of your senses? The God of thunder marrying a mortal? It is impossible. Petition refused. My father, wait. Hear me out. You must. Too late. He is gone. Shot. Disappointed, the stunned superhero turns from his window, still unaware of the commotion in the streets below. Looks grim, doesn't it? Stop a man. Who is he? What is he? Extra more about lava man. Governor summons National Guard. Read all about it. Lava man nearing city. Extra. The newspaper headlines read: Menace from volcano identified as lava man. First photos of strange creature from under Earth's surface. Havoc widespread. Thousands flee. Rally troops to stop Lava Man. But one pair of ears do not hear. One aching heart does not respond. He has never refused me before. I... I cannot give her up. And yet... I must... I must... While in Asgard itself... Another son of Odin surveys the dramatic tableau on Earth. Loki, god of mischief, sworn enemy of his brother Thor, gloats with evil glee at the Thunder God's dilemma. Now is the time for me to strike against the hated Thor. Now when his heart is heavy, when his hand will be unsure, but I am still a prisoner of Asgard, unable to leave. At the end, I must find a cat for an agent to do the task for me. Uh... Nineteen. What was that devastated area below? It is the work of a new medic who has appeared upon earth. A menace known as the Lava Man. I had forgotten about him, although it was I who brought him to the surface as a sinister prank when I mentally caused a long dead volcano to erupt. I shall watch in amusement as he defeats the hearts of Thor. Meantime, we find Thor once again in his earthly identity as Dr. Blake. There is only one thing I can do. I must disavow my heritage. I must give up my role as Thor. Only if I become truly human will I be able to marry the girl I love. And yet, how can I forsake my life as God of Thunder? Doctor, may I speak to you for a moment? Jane, I, I was just thinking of you. I was trying to come to a decision. I'm afraid it's too late for any decisions now, Doctor. I'm leaving. I've accepted a position as nurse with Dr. Basil Andrews. Andrews? That wolf who has always tried to date you? To take you from me? Why? Why, Jane? Because I know what you wanted to ask me, Don. And I know how I feel about you. And I won't take the chance... The chance of saying yes. To a man who is too weak to speak his mind. Then, this is goodbye, Jane. Minutes later, dazed and defeated, Don Blake walks the streets of the city, his head aching, his heart racked with anguish. Got to run! Got to leave the city! The headlines read, Bulletin, Lava Man Near City. Residents flee suburbs. All my strength, my power. You stuck to me now. Citizen, take cover! Clear the street! This is an emergency. The lava man is approaching. This is a city. An emergency. Lava man. What? What is happening? The next sight he sees is so startling, so fearful, that it drives his personal problem from his mind. As Dr. Blake beholds... The lava man! Fire! Human, this is my final warning. Evacuate the cities. Take to the sea. I claim all the dry surface of Earth for the lava people. It's useless. Our shells are charred before they can reach him. Too long have we dwelled below. 
while you puny humans enjoyed the fruits of the serpent. Your weapons are distasteful to me. I shall destroy them. So! All he did was point his hand. Our rifles, the Zookas. They've all turned to, to volcanic ash. Fall back. Regroup. We've got to make new defense plans. Page 21. But suddenly, like a blazing streak of untrained fury, Thor, god of thunder, leaps to the attack. Back, you demon from the nameless depths. The service belongs to mankind, and Thor is their protector. Your word is as futile as your deeds, costumed one. The day of the humans is over. Do not prolong their agony. This is what I needed. Action. Combat. A foe to lash out at. Not for me are the romantic pursuits of human beings. I was born for battle. My limbs ache to smash and shatter. He's gone. Can I have... No. I felt no impact. I did not strike him. Only one answer... He has the power to melt the ground beneath his feet. Seconds later, the mighty thunder god discovers another power of the amazing lava man. As a powerful underwater geyser spouts up from the bottomless chasm below. The depths are his to command. He is a foe worthy of my metal. But he must be defeated. <laughs> do my ears deceive me? Or do I seem to hear laughter... Sinister chortles ringing down from above. <laughs> you hear correctly, despised one. Loki is watching, and I applaud the fact that you have at last met your match. Ugh. Not yet, god of evil. The final blow has yet to be struck. The final note yet to be sounded. <laughs> the city has been evacuated. All that remain are the lava man and me. But before darkness falls, one of us shall remain no more. Look well, evil Loki. See how the thunder god fights when humanity is in peril. Fly, my enchanted mallet. Seek out my enemy. Let your irresistible force crush him out into the open where he can feel the full fury of the wrath of Thor. The costumed one's weapon. I must not let it strike me. Return to your master, my Uru Hammer. You have done your work well. Your flight is useless, inhuman one. There is no place on earth where you can be safe from the power of the Thunder God. Bah! No mere surface dweller can defeat me. Page 23. Observe, Hefnick Thor. Note how his power is almost limitless. See how he hurls a mass of quick drying, stinking lava at you. Let him hurl what he will, Loki. I welcome his attack, for my heart longs for battle. You fight for your cause, mighty one, but I fight for mine. My people have earned the right to claim Earth's surface for their own. Not so. The universe is huge, endless. There is room for all. There is still time for you to follow the path of peace. Your people and the humans may yet exist side by side in friendship. Never. Humanity is weak. It cannot defend itself. It has no place on earth. Only the strong shall survive. Just as I am strong, and you are defeated. You had your chance, lava man. Now you can expect no mercy. And if Loki still gloats above, he is doomed to bitter disappointment. Silence! I now dispose of you. As easily as I shall destroy all of humanity. Nothing can free itself of the thick coat of lava. Now that I have stilled his empty words, 
I can turn to the task at hand. I must lead my people to the surface so that we may take possession of all the earth. For years men have acclaimed my might. Now, as never before, must it prove itself. Even as I lie here, I can flex my muscles until they become almost rock hard. Now, by marshalling all my strength, by making one supreme effort, I can feel my body throb, my sinews strain. The moment is at hand. The one fateful surge of energy. At that incredible instant, if any human eyes could have witnessed the sight, they would have seen the body of Thor actually glowing, as though charged with unimaginable force, as he shattered the crushing mass which surrounded him. I'm free! No! It isn't possible! Nothing human could have escaped my lava trap! This is no human, you face lava man. This is Thor, god of thunder, son of Odin, lord of Asgard. Pull yourself what you will. I shall still cross you into nothingness. Even your flying hammer cannot stop me from turning into a tower of lava which nothing can shatter. <laughs> Enchanted hammer can do more than strike. It can create storm, thunder, and whirlwind. Age 25. A whirlwind strong enough to carry you high into space, to keep you helpless as you spin faster than the speed of sound. My hammer must return within 60 seconds. But I shall join you before you can fall, for I have not done with you yet. Are you watching, Loki? Do you see how easily Thor is defeated? Are you still gloating, still sneering? No. You are silent now. As I knew you would be, my frustrated foe. As for the lava man, he was spawned by an erupting volcano, and he shall return from whence he came. Pounding the top of a nearby mountain with his awesome hammer, the mighty Thor causes the entire peak to fall upon the top of the volcano, sealing it and the strange race which dwells within forever. Thus do I return the lava man to his own kind. For Earth's surface shall never be violated while Thor endures. Moments later, a dramatic flying figure hurtles back to the heart of the city and the medical office of Dr. Don Blake. Now that the menace of the lava man is ended, I must see Jane again. There must be some way I can prevent her from leaving me. But by the time the lame doctor can reach his office... Jane, Dr. Bruce Andrews. What? I'm glad you've come, Don. I was waiting for you. I didn't want to leave without saying goodbye. Jane is going to work for me, Blake. I'm sure you understand. Jane, I know I've no right to insist, to plead, but... It's too late for that now. I waited, hoping you'd return, hoping you'd finally say what I've longed to hear, but while the city was threatened by the lava man, you didn't even care enough to find me. Dr. Andrews drove me to the suburbs, looked after me. A woman wants a man, Dr. Blake, not a timid mouse. And so I'm leaving. Don't worry, Blake. You'll find another nurse. After the two have departed, a bitter figure stares sadly out of the window, thinking thoughts that no human would ever suspect. Of all those who walk the earth, Thor is the mightiest. And yet... I'm powerless to win the one prize I want more than any other. Is this to be my destiny? Must the Thunder God live out his days alone? The end.